Hello, boys and girls. Before starting this painting, be sure to listen to the story of corduroy and also look at the video about textures. In this video, we will be making a textured animal painting. It's gonna be so much fun. Supplies you'll need for this project, a big white sheet of paper, a pencil and an eraser. You'll need a fork. Make sure you ask a grown up which fork you should use. This one is just a plastic one I can throw away when I'm done with. Paint brushes. You'll also need some items to draw circles. You can trace circles from those items. And you will need tempera paint. So paint that is thick. Turn your paper vertical or tall like a giraffe. To start off, we're gonna be finding a really big circle. So I found this bucket and we're gonna use this to trace the head. So we're gonna go near the top of your paper and take your pencil and you're gonna be tracing around the edge of the circle. Once I've carefully gone all the way around, show you what that looks like. So there you can see at the top of my paper, I've got a big circle. Next, you're gonna find some smaller circles. So I think I'm gonna be using the bottom of this cup and we're gonna use this to make the ears for the animal. So you're gonna trace around this time. I'm gonna stop when I get to the big circles. It's gonna kind of remind you of some little Mickey Mouse ears. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm only tracing the part of the ears that's gonna pop off there. You can use your eraser to fix up any mistakes that you see. Now inside these shapes, we're gonna be drawing some smaller shapes. We're gonna draw a shape that looks like a half a circle. This is gonna be the inside of the ears. And then at the bottom of the face, we're gonna be drawing in a little oval here for the nose. So it will look like this when you see the face. Now we need to add in the body. We're gonna be adding in two arms. So we're gonna come out this way, bump, and make a twin on this side, bump. And then as it starts to come in a little bit, we're gonna go down to make his legs. For his little feet, we're gonna go bump, bump, out, bump, bump, and then bring them around. And together. Next, I'm gonna add in the overalls, like the bear was wearing in the story. So I'm gonna draw a line coming down here and a line coming down here. I'm also gonna draw a line coming across here for the bottom of his pants on both sides. We're gonna paint the inside of his ears and his nose the same color. Now, you'll wanna choose a color that's lighter than the color of your animal. So I'm gonna be painting um, a bear and I'm gonna paint him brown. So planting ahead, I'm gonna make a lighter color for the nose and the inside of the ears. So I took peach and I mixed it with just a little bit of brown. And when I stir that up, it's a color that kind of reminds me of chocolate milk. So we're gonna take this color and we're gonna paint it inside of his ears. Make sure you're going slow and careful. You want the inside of his ears to look smooth. And we'll do the other ears so we have a match. and we're gonna paint his cute little nose the same color. 
You see how I'm holding on to my paintbrush, just like you hold on to your pencil. Nice and low, so you can control it. Stay inside the lines that you drew, so you have the shape of that circle for the nose. Next, I'm gonna be using the color that is the darker brown. And this color I'm gonna to use to paint in the bear himself. I'm gonna start by just doing this on his ear so you can get a close up look of what this looks like. So on his ear, when I'm starting to paint this in, you can see I'm not painting this smooth like I did before. I'm actually lifting up my paintbrush and painting little strokes, almost like I'm painting um, a number one. And this is because I want the outside lines to not look smooth, but to look like they have the texture of fur. You see how that's happening? Because I'm drawing little ones with my paintbrush. They're very, very tiny. Now I'm gonna fill in his ear with these little number ones. And then we're gonna do a little secret to make this look like it's even furrier. Now this trick is called Scraffito. Many times at school for Scraffito, we use the end of our paintbrush and we use it like this and we scratch it in so it looks like a pencil. What we're gonna do since we're at home is we're gonna try to use a little plastic fork um, or if you can use a regular fork, make sure you ask a grown up. But this way we can draw lots of lines at the same time to make his ear look like it has the texture of fur. Now this only works if the paint is really thick and if the paint is wet. That's why I only painted a little bit of the chocolate brown and then I went in with that Scraffito trick with the fork. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do this on the other side and on his face. Next, I'll start to paint in his arms. And I'm still doing that same idea to make it furry, lifting my paintbrush. And like I'm painting lots and lots of number ones all the way around his arm. And then I'll go back in and use my fork to add his fur. And remember that technique is Scraffito when I'm scratching in the paint to make a texture. Now, one thing we didn't say is, let's say you make a mistake and you accidentally make some wavy lines that you didn't want to be there. You can always just dip back into your paint, repaint on top, and then go back in and add that texture with your fork and correct it. So you can make it little tiny small lines so that it looks like it's very, very, very furry. For the overalls, I'd like to make a dark green color. So I've taken a little bit of black tempera paint and I've squirted it into my green paint. When I stir it up, it's gonna make my color darker and I'm gonna get that same green as the color that you saw in Corduroy's overalls. Now, when I put the paint on, I'm putting it in the middle part of his body here, and I want it to be nice and smooth. I'm gonna paint one side, and then I'm gonna add in that corduroy texture. I have to go really careful and slow when I'm near his fur so I don't accidentally paint over his really cute fur. So once I have a little bit done like this, we're gonna take, and you see how I'm kind of going up and down stripes with my paint? We're gonna take that same up and down pattern, this time using the bottom of our paintbrush to do a scraffito because this time we don't want our fork. We're gonna make a line that goes all the way down his overalls because corduroy pattern or texture is kind of wavy like a potato chip if you looked at it under a microscope. So we're gonna make lines that go from the top all the way to the bottom. And it's okay if these lines aren't perfectly straight, but they're one right next to each other. These are vertical lines going down the overalls. And I'm doing just a little section at a time 
so that I don't let the paint dry because this technique does not work if the paint is dry. So if it stops working for you, you might need to put a little bit more wet paint on top and then you'll be able to add your stripes. Now it's time to choose a color for the background. I'm gonna be mixing white and purple to make the purple a lighter color. It's gonna look like a lilac, light purple color when I'm done mixing. And this color is gonna go all around the bear. So the parts of the paper that are now white are going to be purple. Now I'm gonna start carefully painting in sections of the background. Now this is when you really need to make sure that you have some paper underneath or some newspaper so that you're not accidentally painting your table. Now when I'm not close to corduroy, I can paint fast. But when I'm near corduroy, I've got to make sure that I'm holding my paintbrush the right way. So down here near the bristles, carefully controlling it. I'm going really slow because I've got another color that I don't want to mix. And once I get a section painted in purple, it's time to have a little bit of fun. We're gonna add in our own patterns. So for this one, there's not gonna be really a texture, but we're gonna draw pictures. So I'm flipping my paintbrush upside down again, and I'm doing the same thing with Scraffito, where I'm scratching into the paint. This time I think I will make some triangles, and then I might try some different kinds of lines, like wavy lines or circles. You will have to wait for your painting to dry completely. For part two, you'll need something for eyes and buttons, as well as a marker or crayon to draw the nose. If you don't have wiggly eyes or buttons, you can use plastic lids or stickers. Once your painting is all dry, right here, we're gonna draw the nose. So I'm gonna draw a little triangle nose, and you can use a black marker or a crayon to do this. And then I'm going to draw it in the mouth. Next, we want to find something that would work for the eyes. If you've got some wiggle eyes at home, that would be perfect. Um, use the squeezy kind of glue to put those on and make those stay. If you don't have wiggle eyeballs, you might find um, something in your house, like a sticker that you could use. Um, another great idea would be to find a plastic lid, um, just like these, and maybe you could glue those down to make eyes. Plastic lids could also be used in place of where corduroy's buttons were. Um, you might have some extra buttons in your house that you can ask if you can use. I'm gonna use some plastic buttons on mine. Again, you've gotta use the squeezy kind of glue to make these stay. and you're gonna put them right where corduroy's straps are. 